Making its first appearance in the 2015 video game Kerbal Space Program, the planet Kerbin is an Earth-like world home to a sentient race of intrepid yet accident-prone explorers called Kerbals. Kerbals are green-skinned bipedal humanoids with large heads, protruding eyes, and short bodies. But despite that unflattering description, they are actually rather adorable. Kerbals are also surprisingly uniform in size, standing approximately 0.75 meters tall with a mass of 45 kilograms. The planet Kerbin is a wet terrestrial with an oceanic coverage of approximately 50% and a topographic range of a little over 8 kilometers. It has a mass less than 1% that of Earth and is only one-tenth the size. This gives it a surface gravity of precisely 1 g and an impossibly high mean density of 58.48 grams per cubic centimeter. But Kerbal Space Program depicts Kerbin and the rest of the Kerbal system scaled down with distances reduced by a factor of 10 and masses reduced by a factor of 10 squared. Reversing this scaling causes Kerbin to appear far more Earth-like, having a mass 89% that of Earth, a size of 0.94 Earth radii, and a far more plausible mean density of 5.85 grams per cubic centimeter. Like Earth, Kerbin's atmosphere has a mean surface pressure of 101 kilopascals and is comprised of nitrogen and oxygen at a concentration and temperature that is believed to likewise be similar to Earth's. Kerbin has an obliquity, or axial tilt, of zero degrees and an orbital eccentricity of zero. This means that it does not experience any seasonal or annual variations in temperature across any part of the planet leaving the only variations in temperature the sole result of its diurnal cycle and fluctuations in its atmospheric and hydrospheric currents. Two major moons orbit Kerbin. The innermost moon is named Moon, spelled with a U, and like its namesake, is gray and highly cratered with a scattering of solidified lava plains known as Mare. In the game, it has a mass less than 1% that of Luna and a radius of a mere 200 kilometers, likely too small to be spherical. Its surface gravity is virtually identical to that of Luna and it has an impossibly high mean density of 29.12 grams per cubic centimeter. But scaled up, this revises to a mass equal to that of Luna, a size 15% larger and an extremely low mean density of 2.91 grams per cubic centimeter, suggesting that a significant portion of the moon is comprised of material with a lower density than rock, such as water or some type of ice. Moon orbits Kerbin at a distance of 12,000 kilometers, or 0.03 lunar distances, with a period of approximately 38.61 hours, or 1.61 days. This scales up to a distance of 0.31 lunar distances and a period of approximately 83.6 hours, or 3.48 days. Moon has a perfectly equatorial orbit around Kerbin, having an inclination of zero degrees and an eccentricity of zero. As a result, both a solar eclipse and a lunar eclipse occur during every orbit. However, given the dynamic nature of terrestrial moon formation, the probability of such a configuration naturally evolving is extremely low. From Kerbin's surface, Moon would have an angular diameter of 1.91 degrees, appearing about 3.7 times larger than Luna appears in Earth's sky. Kerbin's outermost moon is named Minmus and is a minty green lumpen world of 0.0004 lunar masses with a radius of a mere 60 kilometers, definitely far too small to be a spherical body. These minuscule proportions give it a surface gravity of 0.05 g and, you guessed it, an impossibly high mean density of 29.24 grams per cubic centimeter. These parameters scale up to give Minmus a mass of 0.04 lunar masses, a size of 0.34 lunar radii, and a mean density nearly identical to that of its sibling moon, suggesting a similar composition and thus a shared origin. Minmus orbits Kerbin at a distance of 47,000 kilometers, or 0.12 lunar distances, with a period of approximately 299.25 hours, or 12.47 days. This scales up to a distance of 1.22 lunar distances and a period of approximately 648 hours, or 27 days. 
Unlike its sibling moon, Minmus is not tightly locked to Kerbin and possesses a slow sidereal rotation period of 467.59 days. With its scaled up parameters, we would expect a moon orbiting this close to its parent planet to be tidally locked. But in its scaled down state, the small mass of Kerbin coupled with Minmus' ultra high density does render such independent rotation slightly plausible. Another way in which Minmus differs from its sibling moon is in the tilt of its orbital path, having an inclination of 6 degrees relative to Kerbin's equatorial and orbital plane. From the surface of Kerbin, Minmus would have an angular diameter of approximately 0.15 degrees, appearing less than one-third the size that Luna appears in Earth sky. Kerbin is the third of seven planets in the system and orbits its single sun at an average distance of approximately 13.6 million kilometers, or 0.09 astronomical units. This is equivalent to less than one-quarter the distance at which Mercury orbits our sun. This gives Kerbin an orbital period of 106.52 days, or 426.1 local days, given the planet's six-hour synodic rotation period. These parameters scale up to an orbital distance of 0.91 AU with a period of 336.8 days, or 1347.2 local days. The system star is named Corbol, and based on its color and temperature, it should be a spectral type G1 main sequence yellow dwarf star like our Sun. However, the rest of its properties do not support this conclusion. It has a mass of approximately 0.009 solar masses, which puts it on par with a gas giant planet only nine times the mass of Jupiter and far too low in mass to be capable of nuclear fusion. It has a radius of just 38% that of our Sun, which would be consistent with a Type M2 main sequence red dwarf star. This size, along with its reported temperature, would give Corbol a luminosity of 0.15 that of our Sun, which would subject the planet Kerbin to a stellar irradiance nearly 18 times greater than what Earth receives, more than enough to burn off Kerbin's atmosphere and likely melt its surface. But according to reports, Kerbin has a stellar irradiance identical to Earth's, implying that Corbol instead possesses a luminosity of just 0.008, consistent with a type M4 main sequence red dwarf star. This means that either Corbol's radius or its temperature is incorrectly reported. Unlike nearly all the objects in the system, Corbol does not possess an impossibly high density. Instead, its mean density is far below that of our Sun and consistent with a much larger and hotter class of stars. From the surface of Kerbin, Corbol has an angular diameter of 2.2 degrees, making it appear slightly larger than Kerbin's innermost moon in the sky, resulting in all solar eclipses being annular. So how does Kerbin measure up against a realistic planet? Kerbin is physically impossible, but the math describing it is accurate. Indeed, a mathematical analysis of the planet's properties reveals that the developers of Kerbal Space Program understood the physics involved quite well, and this allowed them to downscale the planetary bodies in the game in a way that balanced the physical simulation with a smooth and enjoyable gameplay experience, while also preserving the planetary parameters that were most important to the game, the surface gravity and the escape velocity. So unlike in the many cases of impossible planets in science fiction, Kerbin's creators deliberately made the planet impossibly small, but did so in the best way possible. It's wrong, but also kind of right. I'll split the difference and just give it zero points. Even scaled down, the orbital parameters of Kerbin are mathematically correct. I would have liked to have seen some degree of eccentricity to the planet's orbit, but I can understand why they would omit this for gameplay reasons. Plus one point. Kerbin's atmospheric parameters are very similar to Earth's and thus fairly realistic. If Kerbin orbited a decently constructed star, it would likely have the climate that it is shown to possess. Plus one point. 
Kerbin having two spherical moons detracts from its realism, as terrestrial planets aren't able to form multiple spherical moons. This is because once the first moon forms, it prevents the formation of subsequent moons. Beyond that, the perfectly circular orbit of Kerbin's innermost moon is problematic, as the highly energetic and chaotic method by which terrestrial moons form always results in a moon having some amount of inclination and eccentricity. Negative one point. For whatever reason, the creators of the Kobol star did not scale its radius by the same factor that they scaled all the other celestial objects in the game, and this creates numerous problems that cast the entire system in a bad light. Pun not intended. Well, slightly intended. It is speculated that the reason for this error is due to its creators wanting Kobol's angular diameter to be close to that of moons when viewed from the surface of Kerbin, so that solar eclipses would appear similar to what we experience here on Earth. I know the developers of KSP are aware of the relationship between a star's size, temperature, and luminosity, that is the amount of energy it emits, so it is interesting to me that they chose to ignore the science in order to maintain this one particular aesthetic. Negative one point. With a total of zero points, the planet Kerbin from Kerbal Space Program receives an E grade. Not a great score when it comes to planetary realism, but if that is what it takes to make a fun and charming video game centered around science, technology, engineering, and math, then I'm willing to forgive its shortcomings. Thank you for joining me on this exploration of the planet Kerbin from Kerbal Space Program. I hope to see you when I make landfall on my next alien world. Until then, keep your vectors aligned, your thrust to weight ratio high, and for Valentina's sake, please make sure you have enough delta V.